Hello, everyone. Welcome. Thank you so much for joining us this afternoon. Um, I see some, you know, uh, some friends in the audience already and some SODA members and I AGA members. Uh, thank you so much. Um, thank you so much for being with us. And uh, welcome to this talk uh, by Terry Henderson and moderated by Jen White Johnson um, about Black Colleges, the book. So I, my name is Raquel Castedo and I'm part of SODA, the Society of Design Arts and AAGA Baltimore. We are both, uh, we are, uh, both organizations are Baltimore based and we are happy to have you all from wherever you are right now uh, with us. So let us know uh, where are you joining us from? If you're local, if you're from other, maybe other cities, other states. Um, hi, Jessica from Baltimore. Hello, Steve from Ohio. Hello, hello. Hi, Laurie Roebling. Thank you so much for being with us and uh, helping us to organize this event and is representing also Stevenson University that it's supporting us um, in this program. Thank you. So I want to also thank you, uh, Carol Kessler, that I see Carol's here with us. She's an AJ Baltimore board member, also helped to with this event. Um, and also want to thank Ed Berlin that it's um, was, you know, connected us with Terry and it's a SODA member also helped with the event. So I want to tell you a little bit about um, SODA and then pass to Francis to talk a little bit about AAG and then we get started. Um, so SODA is the Society of Design Arts. We, we, this group was founded over 15 years ago in Baltimore by an all volunteer group of teachers, students, and design professionals. All of them uh, were passionate about the multiple histories of design arts, including graphic design, illustration, architecture, book arts, photography, and many more. SODA has provided more than 100 programs that have explored diverse subjects. And to have a better idea of our past programs, we invite you to check out our website at sodabaltimore.com. And while you're there, sign up on our mailing list to find out about future events. In our website, you see that since 2019, we have been continuously co-hosting events with AJ Baltimore and building together a community interested in design history and its positive impact on design practice and contemporary life. If you're interested in helping to plan, research, and present programs, please feel free to reach out to us. Um, before I pass to Francis, I just want to also uh, thank Richard Stanley that is here, and it's also a, you know, a really important member of SODA that's been part of the planning committee. And thank you all SODA members and AJ members especially to, to join, um, for joining us. Um, also, Stevenson University, um, students and, and professors. So now I want to pass to Frances so she can tell us a little bit about AAG. Hi, Hi Frances. thank you. Thanks, Akel. Yeah, so I know many of you might be familiar with AIGA, um, but for those who are not, or if you're not in Baltimore and you're not familiar with your local chapter, um, we're a nonprofit organization um, and our goal is to advance design as a professional craft, a strategic advantage, and a vital cultural force. Um, in Baltimore here, we're just one of 75 chapters, um, all run by volunteer leaders. And we have over 20,000 members across the nation and outside of the US. Um, so if you're interested in learning more about our chapter here in Baltimore, membership and volunteer opportunities and all of our events, um, you can visit baltimore.aiga.org, drop that in the chat. And um, if you're not in Maryland, you can also, you know, we've seen Philly, Ohio, Raleigh. Um, you can find your nearest chapter and all the virtual events like this. Um, I just attended a Zoom class with, uh, or a, a Zoom yoga class with Boston. I think Jess, who's here, was there too. Um, so you can find those at AIGA.org events. So they've kind of consolidated all the virtual events in one place. 
Um, so yeah, so definitely reach out to us and follow us on social media, subscribe to our newsletter so you find out about events like this. And then uh, back to you, Raquel. Thank you, Francis. Um, so um, I wanna thank you, John, thank um, you, Terry and Jan, and I'll introduce the two of you um, and then you know, pass the floor to you. So Terry Henderson is a Baltimore-based independent curator, a staff writer for Be More Art and the founder of Black Collegists, a platform that features the work of emerging Black collage artists as well as more established and well-known collage artists in order to raise awareness about the history of Black collage art. In her presentation, um, she will discuss her curatorial practice and the creation of the Instagram account at Black Colleges. We invite you to, to follow the account, which led to the publication of her book. And she's going to be telling us about um, more about the book today. She'll also discuss her role at Be More Art as a staff writer and gallery coordinator. Hi, Terry. Hello. Hi. Hello. Thank you. Thank you for, for being with us. Thank you so much. Thank you. Um, uh, I also want to introduce you, Jan. Jan White Johnson is an Afro Latina disabled designer, parent, art uh, activist, and educator whose work explores the intersection of content and caregiving with an emphasis on redesigning a blessed visual culture. Her act, uh, activist and advocacy work has appeared in the Washington Post. Afropunk, Teen Vogue, among other publications. Jan's work is permanent, permanently archived at the Metropolitan Museum of Art and the National Museum of Women and the Arts. She's currently a guest lecturer at the University of Minnesota College of Design. Uh, welcome, Jan, and thank you for being with us. What's up, everyone? Thank y'all for being here. Thank you. So now I'm going to pass to the floor and Terry, let me know if you want me to um, do, pass the slides for you and just whatever is more comfortable. And will you be sharing your screen? Yes, I will. That's awesome. Thank you. One moment, y'all. Uh, hey, thank you so much. Um, thank you for, Kel, for clicking through this with me. I'm having some internet problems. Um, I wanted to take the time to say hello and thank you all for joining us today during your lunch break. And I'm just going to get into this presentation. Uh, so this is called, so, oh, sorry, it's okay, that's fine. Um, so this is a quote by myself, which is always weird, but historically the methods of collage and assemblage have been inextricably linked to black culture using what has been discarded to create a priceless object. And this is a collage by Louis Armstrong that he actually used on his instrument case. So it's like leftover tickets, photographs, which he would tape um, onto them. And I discovered that Louis Armstrong made collages in the process of researching for this book. So I just, I had no idea, which is part of this whole process is just tidbits of information like this. And then we can go to the next one. So yes, uh, again, I'm a staff writer for Be More Art and I'm also a curator here based in Maryland. I'm from Texas, which we'll get into in a minute. Um, I've recently been published in the St. James Encyclopedia of Hip Hop Culture, Art Forum, the Ken Folk Travel Book, um, an online and print platform called All She Makes and Just Smile Magazine, which is a print magazine based out of Australia. And the focus of this presentation is to discuss my curatorial platform, Black Collages, as well as talk about my book, which is here. Um, Black Collage is the book, um, which is an extension of that digital platform. And this is a cover. So yeah, so I was hired to, uh, to run the Connect and Collect Gallery in 2020. Uh, I, after, so I was hired to run the gallery and then my first day was March 16th, um, which is the day that the stay at home orders were implemented in Maryland. So I transitioned into becoming a full-time staff writer and I focus on covering stories that highlight Black, Brown, and queer creatives. I, one of my self-imposed missions is to write about as many 
Black, brown, and queer people as I can while it, while I'm in this position, just elevate their stories and their voices and give them space. I also uh, like to highlight what challenge people think about what art is and kind of, I, like I've done interview sessions with DJs, um, just activists who do artivism, those kinds of things that might ne necessarily get space in a platform like Human Art. So that's that's my job. And um, there's a full time, we have a full time staff of four and I'm the only Black women on staff. So that's that's what I'm doing with, with this platform. Um, so yeah, so it's the online writing practice and then also Connect and Collect, which is a program that's designed to co connect Baltimore-based artists with uh, collectors nationwide, um, Baltimore and beyond. So yeah, this is a our print journal. I think I can't remember which one this was, but this is what it looks like if you're unaware. Uh, Be More Art has an online plat uh, presence. We pu publish maybe something every day, but we also have a print journal that has two uh, editions every year. Um, so yeah, Texas born. I am originally from Fort Worth, Texas. I went to TCU, Texas Christian University. Um, I got a degree in psychology and a minor in religion. And I mention this always because what I studied has nothing to do with what I'm doing for a living today. Um, and I, but while I was at TCU, I supplemented a lot of my time trying to keep my, because I'm not good at school, but I would take drawing and painting classes to just kind of keep that creative push. And that's when I started writing about art. Um, and, but I moved to Baltimore in 2016 because I wanted to get out of Texas. And I got a scholarship to UB Law, which is how I ended up here. This is a collage that's in the book by Robert Leroy Hodge, who's from Houston. Um, just, yeah, it's, it's, it has Texas figures in it and yeah, people with connections to Texas. So while I was at TCU, I, my senior, second senior year, because I had a victory lab, I designed an independent study with a professor named Dr. Sage Elwell about black religion and black art. Um, and it was, my thesis was about irreverence and embodied theology. And it focused on the work of David Hammonds and Kara Walker. And it's, what's so cool about this is that, and significant in my life, is that Kara allowed one of her collages to be like, uh, but she allowed us to use it for free in the book, um, which is insane, but it's, uh, it's one of the first collages that you'll see if you have a physical book. This is just an example of her work. So this is the example that's actually in the book. And I wanted to pair it with this quote by Justin Smith from Afrovisualism, which is the in the prologue of the book. So black collage is a visual frequency that breaks the line of sight and ushers in frames of reference from depths of internal and external sources. We wear our influences on our sleeves. Blackness aesthetically exists in a collage state. Justin's here. Hi, Justin. <laughs> Sorry. Um, and Justin graciously wrote um, an essay, which would turn into the prologue for the book. Hi, Justin. And the next. So, um, so yeah, so I, I began my Be More Art freelance writing practice when I was kind of at the end of law school in 2019. And I started with this series called Masters. And in my head, it was going to be a year of these interviews, and I would turn them into a book. And it was a series of Q and A's with graduate students in their studios. It was important that I wanted to get a photographer in there so that they would have really nice documentation of their work. And I just wanted to know, why are you in grad school? Tell me about your practice. But because of COVID, it got cut short. So these are, um, I believe Masters with Monsieur Zohor was the first one that I did. Um, so that's, that's his name, uh, goes by Sandy, him in the studio. And Miguel Bracelli is an artist that I did some video work with in, both here and in DC, and um, that's a, a screenshot of that article. These are just some, just so you can kind of see what I write about. Uh, these are stories that I did over the past couple of years. So the first is a, was a review of a work of Isaiah Winters, who was an incredible photographer from Baltimore, but currently based in Brooklyn. And then there is Larry Cook, who I got to interview with Martise Badola, who was a black gallerist in Baltimore. Um, there, another one of those full circle moments because I was a fan of Larry's practice, before, I think before I moved here. So he's incredible. And you should probably find that one online as well. And then the last one is See West Baltimore Write with Shay McCoy, who is a, a black photographer who wrote this beautiful book called West Baltimore Ruins, um, which yeah, it's, check it out. Buy from Red Embers. <laughs> and then, yes, next, please. 
So, and then this is um, an article uh, that I wrote about Shan Wallace, who is an incredible multimedia artist um, who's, who's been doing some making some. Hi, Shan! <laughs> Shan's here too. That's awesome. Uh, and so, yeah, so this is her work. And I actually um, reviewed a show that she did in a space called Mahari Sakar Gallery. And then just also just talking about her practice. Check out Shan's work. It's the blog. And then this is a review that I did. So I do do traditional exhibition reviews as well. That was at a place called UB Blake here in Baltimore. It was a show curated by Thomas James. And some, there was also some collage work in the show as well. Um, Charles Philippe John Pierre and Bria Sterling Wilson um, had work in the show and they're also in the book. And then this is an article, uh, this is one of my favorite articles that I've written um, with an artist named David Jeremiah who is uh, based in Dallas, but had a sh series of shows on the East Coast. And I got the, I interviewed him and we just talked about everything. He was formerly incarcerated and talked about his practice. And yeah, so check these out. These are all people that you should be paying attention to and collecting <laughs> potentially. So yeah, so this is a, a collage by Romare Bearden called Baptism. And you might hear people say a lot recently that black contemporary art is having a moment. Um, but Black art has and always has been here. Black artists have been here, Black curators have been here, Black writers have been here, while the white history canon has erased and minimized their e efforts actively. So, and uh, Black collage has been here as well, and the book and the platform seek to highlight that legacy. So these are some uh, collages that were in Essence Magazine that Lorna Simpson shot Rihanna and made these collages, uh, everybody, these are so cool. Um, just some examples of it showing up in contemporary culture recently. This is a, a work by Micheline Thomas who had a show at the Baltimore Museum of Art called A Moment's Pleasure. If I'm not mistaken, it's still up and it might be closing very soon. Uh, but yeah. Closes in May, thank you. And this is uh, some work by Deborah Roberts who is based, or from, from Austin, Texas. Uh, she had a show at the Austin, the Contemporary last year. And um, she did a, she was commissioned to do this cover on the 10th anniversary of Trayvon Martin's death for New York Magazine. And, and then the ride is just another, another example of her work. So digital beginnings. Uh, so after George Floyd and Breonna Taylor were extrajudicially murdered by police officers, Doug and Lori Kenyon, who were collectors based out of Washington State, hired me as their curator of selections of private acquisitions of black collage art. So I know you probably remember that push of institutions being like, oh, I have black art, collect black artists, all of these things. Um, Doug and Lori recognized that the, I would be the best person for that position uh, based on my experience and lens. Just I could tell them better than they could do on their own. Um, so I started the Instagram account Black Collages as a way to organize my research. And it, I literally made this for me. I did not expect maybe a couple of friends to see it, but I didn't expect it to be what it is now. Uh, and so it was just how my brain works. I'm like, okay, let me just put these on an Instagram feed so I can know who I should suggest. Um, and so that account has grown into an, a community with over 6,000 followers and a book, uh, which is wild. And this is a work that's in the book. All of the works that I think that I'm showing on this pleasure are from her inside the book. And this is um, a collage by Brittany Reed called No Justice, No Peace. So black collages, I referred to my work during that first year with Kenya Art Collection as the incubator. I don't work with Doug and Lori Kenya anymore, but this was the, what's important about this logo is that all of the work on the logo was purchased and added to their collection. And some of the artists that were purchased during that first year had never had their work collected. Um, some of the artists in the book have never been published. So, the, so the, the, the goal of the platform is to highlight just Black contemporary collage artists. And we facilitated sales of Black collage art as well as place their work in gallery exhibitions. Um, and it features Black artists in various skill levels, age, background, location, I, it does not matter. Uh, there are other platforms on Instagram that are seeking to kind of raise awareness about Black collage art, but, they're, but they accept work by people who are not Black, and that is not what this account is. 
The only artwork posted on there is made by a black collage artist. So the curation of a digital archive. So on the, plat in the, on the platform in the book, I only feature work made by black collage artists. It is a political statement in itself. The page and the book are to correct our historical record and let the art world at large recognize the truth that black contemporary artists have been making collage and are making collage today that is valuable and relevant. So this is a collage by Adolphus Washington who lives in London, England, and it's called The Confidant at G's Barbershop. And it's an analog collage. I really like that one. So why focus on black collage artists? So this is a quote that from an, inner, an essay that Emily Owen wrote for a magazine called New Collection that I'll read. So Henderson slash the platform's representation and research of black collage artists confronts the white dominated field of the art world with these questions. Who are contemporary artists? Who are its critics? What are the contemporary issues that deserve insertion into the canon? And while great strides have been made in the art world in terms of recognition for women and other marginalized societies in the Western canon, people of color, especially black artists, still remain at the fray or rather the gates finding to be let in. Here too, collage as practice and process has been grossly unconsidered within the sometimes staunch limitations of popularly accepted quote unquote fine art, often placed under the moniker of multimedia works and delineated in opposition to the ranks of paintings, sculpture and photography as quote unquote white works. So that's another goal of the platform is, is to show that collage is not, I mean, because it is a, a valuable art form it, with just as much relevancy as painting or sculpture because there's kind of been in the past people saying, kind of designating it as something of more of a hobby or a craft. So that's, that's what that's about. And this is a collage by Peter Williams. All of the artists who are in the book are alive today, except for Peter who passed away um, as the book was being made. And so I wanted to honor him and by including him in this presentation. So correcting the art historical record. So when I first started this project, I just was like, okay, like let me just Google black collage artists and see what comes up. And of course, like Lorna Simpson, McKinney Thomas, Derek Adams, Romare Bearden, Jacob Lawrence popped up, but I couldn't find like really explicit historical examples without digging. And I struggled to find, I just thought there would just be a list of these are the people who are black and making collage art right now, today. Um, and the reason I include <clears throat> Benny, Andrews, Benny Andrews' work is because I'm embarrassed to say that I didn't know about his work until I started this project. And this is a collage from 1977. He was an activist and an incredible collage artist who's, who's actually been, um, he's represented by, or his estate is represented by Michael Rosenfeld Gallery. They've been showing his work at some art fairs. And so that's, I was like, okay, it's more than just because I knew for a fact that I had colleagues who were making collages. So that was another drive behind uh, the page and the research. So this is the mission of Black Collages. Uh, and this is a collage by Jesse Freeman. Uh, and it's just art made by Black people that centers Black subjects is grossly under, underrepresented and undervalued in both the collage world and the art world at large. Black Collages seeks to highlight and amplify the work solely of Black artists making collage worldwide. Collage is a viable art form for Black communities, and part of our mission is to introduce Black people and other diverse audiences to the field of collage. So I just, I have some friends around me that have started collaging. That makes me very happy. Um, black Collages will document the historic relevance and the growing prevalence of Black collage art. So why publish a book? Uh, so at the end of 2020, as the IG, as the Instagram group faction, a friend of mine reached out and was like, you need to protect your research. And I was like, okay, what does that even mean? And she's like, you need to protect your research. So you've been working on this thing. You need to protect your research now. And I just thought about that a lot. Um, and I think, I don't know if anyone remembers, and I can't see your faces, but there was a moment where Instagram just died. It just went down. And everybody was panicking and we were already in the process of making the book but I remember being like thank god that there will be a physical record of the page just in just in case something happens and so around um and but I was also thinking about how like I understand that there's a digital divide I understand that not everyone has um smartphone or Instagram and I was missing people like my aunt Peaches doesn't have Instagram and I remember just like wanting to tell her about things. Like I don't even send her links for anything that's social media because she, she just doesn't have it. So I, I recognized that that was a, an opportunity that I was missing to kind of 
they also find artists who aren't on these platforms. So um, books are important is another reason why it, for an artist to have their work in print is an opportunity that isn't guaranteed. And, um, and the book has just become a physical record and tangible archive of the research I did from 2020 to 2021. Uh, and this is Jesse uh, Freeman's grandmother. He made the quote behind her and I love her hat. And uh, he also is a, just a supporter of the page from the beginning. And he's one of the artists in the book. And he sent me this Polaroid. And it's, it's, it's interesting because he also has a Baltimore connection. So it's a small world, but I just, I'm like, I, I, I saw this and I started crying. So I was like, okay, that, that puts some wind in my sails is, is seeing this photo. So uh, my intentions for the book, I wanted it to be relatively inexpensive compared to other fine art books. It's still kind of expensive. Um, I wanted it to, I'm hoping that one maybe a paperback version, but it's also available in digital format. Um, I wanted to include scholarly essays. I wanted it to place contemporary Black collage art within the art history canon as a whole. And I wanted to serve as a cross section of who is Black and making collage art today. Um, so there's people that have blue chip gallery representation. There's people that just started making collages two years ago, uh, people from all over the world. And I also just wanted to show the range of Black collage art because again, I had, um, excuse me, assumptions that were wrong about what was a collage until I started doing this research. And I wanted to challenge other people's expectations of what Black art, it, Black collage art is and what it could be. So this is a digital collage by Sadie Barnett, who's based out of Oakland. Um, and so if show these next examples. So, so yeah, so there's there's abstract collage artists in the book. So again, this is Charles Philippe Jean-Pierre on the left-hand side, Jean Fields on the right-hand side. So these are just paper, old school cutting, pasting, rearranging um, on, yeah, that's that's what those are. And um, abstract work. Sorry, no, wait, hold on. See, I'm getting tripped up. These are these are abstract and they're analog as well. These are examples of abstract work. Sorry. And then more figurative representation. So these are collages by Nancy B. Price um, and then Melvin Nesbitt Jr. digital and analog. So there's Bria Sterling Wilson's work on my left, uh, which is an analog collage. And on the right-hand side is Idris Beach, uh, his work on the right. And he is based out of Jamaica. Bria is based in Baltimore. And so this is the book. Um, this is the front and back cover of the book. Uh, all of the work in the, the designers made a collage out of Selected works from inside of the book, and in the back is an image by Helena Metatetheria, who is incredible, um, exhibiting a lot right now. Her her work is everywhere, and so that's what the book looks like. If you don't have one, so and this is a collage by Shifan Taylor, and it's um, so this is just kind of an overview. So published in November twenty twenty one. Black Collages, the book featured features over 50 emerging and established Black collage artists from around the world with over 300 full color images alongside historical context and academic essays. The book establishes a physical archive of the history and future of Black collage artists. Black Collages, the book does not claim to be a complete record at all, but rather a door that invites others into a conversation about representation in Black collage art, both historically and currently, and challenges others to expand their own research. And it's published by Kenya Publishing and designed by Just Designs, written and curated by me. Yes, there's, that's it's in the book. So there's some selected text in the essay. I think I saw uh, Danielle is in here, so hi. Um, uh, Danielle wrote an essay about, about the historical connection between printmaking and collage. Um, there's also a historical survey of Black collage artists by Laurie Kanyer that shows uh, evidence that Black collage artists were making collages at the same time as Picasso. There's an essay called Layering and Belonging by Yesenia Navarrete Hunter, who's an historian and collagist who talks um, about the cultural impact of Black collage artists. Um, in the prologue uh, by Justin, who is the founder and creator of Afrovisualism, called the rhythmic continuum of Black collage, having a knack in the cut, cutting up and getting down. There's an essay that makes a, a bunch of comparisons, but the ones that were jumping out to me were the ones about collage, collaging, collaging to jazz and remixing, crate digging about the inherent nature of Black creative. What's the right word? Not alchemy, but 
just making those connections. Justin is brilliant. Check out his page at Afrovisualism. And um, it, it makes sense that his work started or was the first essay text to start the book because he was able to say what I was struggling to say in a very elegant way. So each artist had a full color spread. They're allowed to, um, to submit. I can't remember the exact number, but it was up to six. And I made the final selections of artists and narrowed down the images with the publisher making design decisions. So the publisher was based out is in y Yakima, Washington. So that was, and I'm in Baltimore. So there's definitely a gap of um, in, in time and in, in distance, but we got it done. <laughs> So the, these just some examples from the book um, of what you would see. So this is Delano Dunn's work. Uh, Jessica Whittingham from the Bahamas. Melissa Sutherland Moss from the US. Rafael Berantini, who's from France, who's in France right now. And Vanessa Cruz, who is in the United States. And Yannick Lowry, who is in the United States as well. And Maury, Hitch Maury Hitchcock, who's also in the United States. And Masani Landfair, who is also in the United States. I was also just trying to show y'all more of the range and the, the works that were selected for the, for the book. Uh, so this is a quote by my colleague, um, Kalila Isle Harris, who's a scholar who goes to, uh, currently at Howard University. And um, we were co-curated an exhibition based on her research at Yale Divinity School. Um, and she stated that the methodology of black collage is similar to the methodology of black life. This is an image of uh, Kalila's work. And I just, again, like one of those quotes that says anything better that I could say. So and then this is an, another part of Justin. I wish Justin could read these. Um, so in collage, the cut of a photo or frame is an act of the flow state. Blackness exists in a collage form, stacking upon multiple layers of black vernacular tradition and iconography. Collage harnesses our imaginations, picturing ourselves rolling through continuums as we envision. And that's by Justin. And he made this incredible graphic. Uh, again, just check out his Instagram page. So yeah, and this is my chance, uh, chance work. And uh, does anybody have any questions? That, that's all I have to say on this end. And thank you, Raquel, for clicking through that because my computer would have crashed for sure. You're welcome, Terry. Wow, this is amazing. Um, it's really precious work, really um, beautiful presentation. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, thank you. Um, I want to invite uh, I, Jan to join us back and moderate and see if she has also wants to share any questions. Wow, very, very powerful. Um, I was like taking screenshots of the slides and um, because of, you know, of just the way that um, all of the artwork is like moving me and I have a copy of the book as well. Please go and, and purchase this and support this, this amazing revolution, this movement. Um, again, I'm Jen White Johnson and I'm a visual artist and graphic designer and also um, a, a design and art educator here in Baltimore. So it's just an honor for me to just share space and to hold space today with this vibrant community. Terry, thank you so much for continuing to validate um, this movement and to, to validate Black artists and Black creatives. Um, you know, 
bringing us to a space where we, where our improvisation is, is radical and where it is revolutionary is such a huge deal. And, and I'm just blown away by all of the artists that you just brought to life. Um, you know, whether it was past artists that you were able to introduce in the beginning, just, you know, historical names that we have to hold space for as our, you know, Faith Ringgold and, and folks from our Bearden, like who are our ancestors, who, who were our ancestors, but are, are also still with us, um, who were, you know, um, uplifting the movement and who were, and who have paved the way for us to artists like Helena, um, Shan, and so many folks who, who are just building so many radical, who are building a radical space, um, whether it's analog, whether it's digital. Um, and so I just, I, I definitely wanna hold space for you to talk a bit more about that methodology, um, that improvisation, that collage allows for us that just allows for us to, to exist, you know, where, where there's no rules. Yeah. Um, as you can see, collage is a messy, um, very punk like space to, to yes. exist in. And that's what blackness is. Like it is a very, it is a radical. very radical space where we, um, where no one understands. Like we are, we are this, this beautiful lineage mm -hmm. of folks who have always set their own pace, set their own rules, set their own journey. So can you just talk a bit more about about what what you feel like that methodology methodology continues to be for us? Oh yeah, you put me on the spot right off the gate. That's, that's good. <laughs> um, it's I mean when Kalila brought that said that quote, she touched on something that I have also written about about just like this inherent nature of just having to not necessarily even hustle but just make things happen. Just and like, like, I don't want to be too simplistic, but like talking about like, and it, like, like, like soul food is this, this genre of cooking that came from things that were discarded and given to given uh, to black people and, and birthed an entire food movement or, or, or jazz, that, like that kind of like inspirational or um, improvisational thing. And that's something that I think is really powerful about collage. And I think you and I might have talked about this before about and, and I'm gonna bring up my hatred for oil painting. I'll take that out of context, but it's just, I for like I wanted to paint and I couldn't afford to do it. Oil painting is expensive. Going to art school is expensive. These materials are expensive. Having studio space is expensive. Collage, in my, in my opinion, it's something that you can make with whatever you have available to you. So that you can make glue out of flour and water. You can use newspaper clippings. You can use wrappers. You can use whatever you want and make these things that, are not quote unquote, and I don't want to say just craft, but make these things that are art that need to be collected, deserve to be in museums, in collections, and exhibited, and and then yeah, and and recognize and have space that that the, that this incredible thing is happening. Uh, and often when black creators were not supposed to be doing anything at all or, or making these things happen at all, that's that's it's just there, and also there's like an inherently spiritual. I feel like side to collage was like the, this act of like touching and moving things around, manipulating. And I, I've talked to people and they're like, you don't really know when it's done, just know. Like, it's like, there's no stopping point. They're just like, okay, like this is finished. To me, like that's communication with the sacred, like that, that being able to be like, okay, it's finished. Um, those kinds of things. Excellent, excellent, yep. Exactly. Yeah. So Julia says, absolutely agree about the utility of collage. Um, and, and, and it's true, there's no wrong or right way. And I'm glad that in the book that you held space for Justin's essay, where it's just, you know, this, um, and uh, where is it? I wrote it down. The, uh, the, the collage is the visual sonic equivalent of a remix, mm -hmm. you know, um, validating that remix that we can repurpose, yeah. that we can recycle. And like you were saying, um, as black folks, like we've always been used to using what was at our disposal mm -hmm. to make that magic, you mm -hmm. know? Um, and so I love how the book explores that. So Thank cool. And so you. I wanna make sure that we hold space for audience questions because like ugh, like I could just rap with you all day yeah. about this. Um, <laughs> we'll do and, uh, 
<laughs> I know, right? Part two, Black Pelagius, the workshop, y'all. Um, Let's do it. For sure. <laughs> Let's do it. Yeah, yeah. So a lot of folks in the chat are asking, will the book be available online anywhere? Where yeah. can they currently pick up the book? Um, okay. it, yeah. yeah. So it's available. It's on, available on Amazon if you wanted to straight up order from Amazon. It's also available. Um, the web, the e, the ebook format is available uh, through kenyaartcollection.com. And then if you are, I'm working. It's just me working on getting into physical bookstores. If anybody has any bookstore near them that they want to email me about carrying the book, please let me know. But it, in Baltimore, it is at Greedy Reads, the IV. It will be at the BMA bookshop. Um, it's gonna be, it's at Good Neighbor and Red Emma's. And then it's going to be working on the Micah bookstore. And then it's gonna be in the Mino, Mino collection in Houston. Um, you can order through Reparations Club, which is, I love them. And you can also, where else? There was another place. Oh, Ghost Gallery in Seattle. So. And it'll be at the VCU bookstores as well, uh, Virginia Commonwealth University, the ICA bookshop. Yes, yes. Well, so okay. many places, so <laughs> many places. And um, and so I, I also really wanted to just acknowledge, you know, that collage is such a form of visual storytelling and expressions mm -hmm. when often words aren't our only chosen weapon. Mm -hmm. um, and so I guess, with collage, and this is going to lead into the next question, you know, how, what was your criteria in terms of selecting the work to be included? Like, how did, like, how did some of the artwork from, and, and just the collage process from the artists, like, speak to you in a way where you felt like, okay, well, without words, without, like, contextual or, or textual language mm -hmm. that these collages could indeed you know like tell these stories could like mm -hmm. these narratives can be like as an audience we can really fall into these narratives and, and understand them in a way that's that's a beautiful question i so at the most basic level all of the artists who are in the book were featured on the instagram um part of that is i started like the process when you submit work to instagram you have to submit a photo of yourself because I do get submissions from artists who are white trying to have their stuff posted and I'm like, we're not, that's not what we're doing here uh, on this page. But, so they were all artists that I had at least had some kind of communication with. Like they knew that they, they were on the page. We were in community in that way. Um, and then a, but based like the work in the book, I just knew that I needed, it needed to just not be one thing. I knew that I needed analog and like really representational. I knew that I needed abstract, sorry. Why is my brain doing that? Uh, just like a wide range. Because that's another thing that I want to reinforce is that this is not every Black collage artist by, by any means. Um, but I just wanted it to be a survey. Like in my, my fantasy is that somebody will go into a library and pick it up and be like, okay, like this is who's Black and making collage today. And, and I'm, I'm excited that these things are happening. But I don't really have a great like rubric or metric. It was just going through and thinking about what it would look like in print and who was next to who, what was gonna be in this one that was gonna be in in, in, um, in the next, in the, like, in the features I mean, like in the spreads. But it was just, I, I selected works down and then those final, final decisions were um, made by the design team based on like the layout and how it would look. And I had like, if there was something that was just like not gonna work, I would be able to say like, no, like we can't do this, those kinds of things, yeah. Yeah. No, no, yeah, I, no, no, no heavy rubric. It's just what I thought. And then, but, but I also like wanted to make sure that it was not just blue chip gallery people. Um, right, I think at one right. point some people wanted me to make that book and they thought mm -hmm. that that was what it was going to be. And that's not what it is. Like I said, I wanted it to be a historical like cross section of everybody. And that includes people who, again, just started making collages in 2020 or, or people who, who, who have, there's people who, who never shared their collages until, until the page. So that's those kinds of things. Mm, wonderful. Yeah, that, that's excellent because that, you know, allows, you know, like you said, someone who hasn't necessarily been in the gallery space or who, who's not, who doesn't have any necessary, you know, representation, which is all, which, which is, 
a level of privilege at some times, you know? Um, you know, when we think about our like black artists and how old they were when they finally were able to get their first yes. gallery show. Yeah. I mean, so much is still the same. I mean, oh. when it's like, we almost have to be validated by our degrees mm -hmm. and, you know, places where we're teaching just to be able to be noticed. Um, and that that leads in, into this really great question um, that is, is from Kristen, who is saying, thank you for assembly, thank you for assembling such inspiring work. Do you have any thoughts on some of these artists' creative process? Um, do you do they have a vision of the finished collage and look for source materials to create that vision, or does it go the other way around? Um, first, I wanted to say that I agree with your point. Deborah Roberts did not have a museum show in mm -hmm. Texas until last year. Exactly. Yeah. For decades, and it's from Texas. Ridiculous. Mm -hmm. But good job yeah. to for better late than yeah. Yes. And the way that and 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 that whole the way that they allowed for the installation to be like on the outside, like they really milked it. And I'm like, okay, it's about time. Like, what yeah. took y'all so long? For you know? sure. But uh, so in terms of the, of the, I guess the, I mean, I'm not a collage artist, so I'm not the best person to ask this question. But I know I feel like a lot of the artists in the, I'm trying to think of like specific examples. Um, like for example, like Jesse Freeman uses a lot of music references. So the titles, I think there's one, like one, in, there's one in the slasher called Charade is a D'Angelo song. Um, and he, he, he has like a lot of jazz references, like images in the work or, or he'll, he'll put like a snippet of a Carrie James Marshall something in there to kind of like tie it back into history. But I just, I mean, I know that there's some artists that switch between using analog and uh, analog and digital or they do a mixture of them but i i don't i i don't really know how to answer that question because i don't i'm not a part of the process i just yeah and me. and and i think of like shan wallace's work and i know they're on the call in terms of that mix um and the process specifically comes from the narrative of the environment yeah. you know so with shan it's like these beautiful like narratives and reflections of like Baltimore life, of like the children and, you know, just the folks, the community that really helped to inspire like the storytelling themselves because they are the story. Yeah. Um, so think of the, the creative process as a space of just capturing like what is around you, what is your environment, yeah. Oh, um, yeah. which is, yeah, exactly. Yeah. That was something that I thought about was that they're every all of them are telling their place through their work like like for example Jessica Whittingham is in the Bahamas and she has like all of the sea imagery and water and then and, and like same with Idris um, and then like Shan's work being a, very much about Baltimore I think that like um it's just it's so that's another thing is it's just all the storytelling that didn't need text it, it just speaks to the images which is really special and I also wanted to say like I just am so grateful to the artists for trusting me because uh, I know there is vulnerability in being published and then this person that they maybe have never met in person is DMing them uh, even though we had had a, a like some interactions with the with the work but I think it was a leap of faith and I, and I so appreciate it and I don't take it for granted because sharing your work is sensitive it's and so having it in print and knowing that it wouldn't be misconstrued or, or like I want, I've tried really, really, really hard to make sure that all names were correct, a triple, quadruple checked, because white people sometimes don't understand like how important it is that names are names and they are what they should be in print. So those kinds of things. Exactly, it's so beautiful. Yeah, and, and, um, and, and I just wanna go back to the point that you said earlier about, you know, holding space for the printed matter and how, you know, I think of so many, you know, when, you know, Black folks weren't even given the access to publish or to read. And it was like, literally, they were breaking the law. Like, mm -hmm. you could be imprisoned for wanting to kind of hold space for your own agency mm -hmm. and how this book is this living, evolving archive mm -hmm. that, as you said, will always exist. Like, that the printed matter is so important. Um, and, and that leads to, um, you know, Philip's question, do you have any upcoming exhibitions and 
th things that you're curating to help um, continue this really beautiful movement. There's a lot of solidarity shouts that are saying yes to the workshop. And <laughs> hey, Let's do I, it. I, I, I sign up, I, I'm, yeah. I'm signing up. I can help facilitate and teach, you know, so. It'd be fun. Um, yeah, we need more time. We need more time. So shout out to Raquel for connecting us also. Um, upcoming stuff. So I currently have an exhibition or an outdoor collage installation at Good Neighbor in Baltimore with a, our Anthony Grant. Um, it's a huge billboard uh, with a black woman's Afro and so like some references. And I wanted, when I was given the invitation, I was like, it needs to be something that is black because Hampton is a very white neighborhood. So I was like, like how do we make sure we know it's a black collagist thing? Uh, so Anthony created this work for the space. He'll be here on April 8th for an artist talk. That's that at Good Neighbor. Um, what, what else? I'm working up. So in two weeks, two or three weeks, my brain is kind of fried. So I have to, there will be a two part exhi or exhibition here and in DC. Here, I mean, here at Connecticut Collect in Baltimore, we have a gallery in DC that has uh, five black uh, art, or five artists who are in the book. And in there, and it's about, it's called Resplendent. It's about Black women in advertising. So I was spending a lot of time with like Jet and Ebony and also a lot of the people in the book utilize those like, like Lorna does. And so there's those things. What else am I working on for Black Collages? Oh, I'm going to be on Wednesday. I will be at the University of Delaware uh, at Danielle's invitation. Danielle Cancer, who's a brilliant scholar who is at the University of Delaware created an exhibition of black collage, which I am so excited to see on Wednesday. And I'll be on a panel with uh, Danielle on Wednesday. And I believe it is on Zoom also. And then I'll be at VCU sometime in our ICA. Justin Smith and I have Afrovisualism. Visualism will be in conversation with each other in May. Um, though, like I, and I need to just, somebody asked if I have a newsletter. I need to just, I need to just do it because uh, I can't remember all this stuff. Or And there is a website, blackcollages.com, but maybe let's just make an event page so that people can see all the things coming up. But I think that's it. It's, yeah, that's it <laughs> for now. Yeah, that's amazing. No, and, and it's good to know that the conversation is going to continue. Yeah. Um, yeah. Because I the book, yeah, yeah. And I know that that was your goal, you know, yes. that that was the whole point of this, you mm -hmm. know, um, that it that the, the book wouldn't exist as a monolith, like in this silo, um, mm -hmm. in that's just reserved for, you know, a, a library. And yeah. it's like, no, it's it's kind of like this living, breathing space mm -hmm. um, that continues to pour so much life and soul into this continuous movement. Um, you see me, so I appreciate it. Like, oh, I, I see you. Another mm -hmm. book for sure. Uh, looking for another publisher to do another book with, like, I don't, I'm not sure if it'll be completely different artists or an update of the first one, but just wanted to keep it because there has to be another one. There can't just be one. If we're all still out here living and working and making things, there has to be a part two. So, yeah, just a lot of ideas. I'm always open yeah. for collaboration. Um, so it's just with as which is much with as much energy and time that I have those kinds of mm -hmm. things. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, and whether it's like you said, like a society, and you know, because the, you know, there's so many printmaking societies and collage societies, like you said, um, but one that represents like this democratic view of, well, you don't need to be this in order to be a part of our collective. Like, just be, just just exist as like even if you're like. A lot of the times, like I collage, like on my phone, you know, I love because collages also I'm a oh, fan. thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Really and so, <laughs> and so for folks who have disabilities, you know, like for me, like I have like chronic fatigue, mm -hmm. I have um, an autoimmune disorder, and also ADHD. So sometimes, if I want to pick up my device, whether it's my phone or my iPad, um, to quickly photograph something or to quickly find images and to be able to kind of create um, just a quick expression on the fly um, and have it validated as like a really beautiful, great work of art um, yes. or a great a way to like express, you know, like what I'm feeling, especially if it's an act of resistance, you know, mm -hmm. like a clear response mm -hmm. to, you know, oppression, mm -hmm. then I feel like 
to be a part of a collective that will uplift that, then I feel like that's safe, yeah. you know? That, that's a safe space. Yeah. And oftentimes as artists, we, we don't feel safe. Mm -hmm. We feel attacked, we feel oppressed. And I feel like collage is like one of the ultimate spaces for liberation mm -hmm. because it is this open, fluid, improvisational, musical way of yeah. creating, you know? Yes, 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 yes. Yeah. yes that, all of that. Yeah. 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 yeah, let me see with this pug. Yes, it is. It's just, I'm really grateful. It's, I, my curatorial practice was a little less focused a couple of years ago, and now I was like, nope, this is what we're doing. And I thought that maybe at one point the page would stop, but I'm like, nope, we're buckled in, we're gonna keep it moving, and whatever happens, happens. But I'm just so grateful for the community. Like I, every time I felt like quitting or, or or not finishing anything, someone has reached out to me and affirmed me and been like, like I didn't know that there were other black women in collage right now, or mm -hmm. or like, mm -hmm. thank you for sharing my work. Someone bought a print or those kinds of things. That's yeah. why I do what I do for those yeah. moments. Yeah, and and another a plug for those of y'all that are looking for any resources. I was yeah. I was sharing this with Terry. This is a really beautiful book by Miriam Kaba. Um, I hope that some of y'all have are familiar with her work. Um, and black. This is called um, Black Photo Booth, mm -hmm. and what it is, it's like it's this really beautiful collection of archival images mm -hmm. of that of just images that have been collected over time throughout you know, Miriam's life and where she's, you know, kind of borrowed images from like her parents and, you know, um, to be able to kind of archive these really, really beautiful black and white photos of mm -hmm. black folks. And a lot of these were just kind of left behind and like old archival photo booths, like in Coney Island or wow. something, you know, like, like, uh, so maybe, cool. yeah, like photo booths where a lot of these things were just kind of like hidden. And it's, and you know, and it's like, understand that, um, you know, the art of collaging is a form of being able to like honor, you know, the past, the present and the future, you know, because you don't know what's going to happen as you're kind of like creating this very like improvisational and that's the whole point, like to find freedom in that. Mm -hmm. So I'm so thankful to you. I don't know how much time we have left, but I'm so thankful to you. I know Terry, I can talk to you all day for sure. Yeah. <laughs> so we will, we will, we will. Connect. Yes, yeah, we definitely will. And seriously, like on the um on the the workshop, um, oh, yeah. because like I because I, a lot of folks are saying, oh, digital collage and and all these things, and you could do analog and digital mixing both mediums. A lot of people do that. Mm -hmm. Um, so there's definitely beautiful strategies and and methods. Seriously, yeah. yeah. It's exciting. <laughs> It is. It really is. Thank you, AIGA, Soda, Stevenson. I think we have some professors. I hope we have some students that were also a part of the call. Um, I hope y'all were able to kind of, you know, feel feel seen. So, thank yes. you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, Terry, for this wonderful presentation. Thank you, Jan, for moderating and for this, you know, wonderful conversation. Um, we really appreciate appreciate both of you, and you're very inspiring. And you know, it's a wonderful way of starting um, the week um, and ending the month. So, okay. I, oh yes, yeah, I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> Right. Um, Terry uh, shared with us what she's up to in the next, uh, or right now, what she's working on. Jan, would you like to share with us what yes. you're working on and, you know, and say a few words like yeah. to say goodbye? Oh, yeah. Um, make sure that y'all um, check out the State of Black Design conference that, that's coming up um, March 4th through the 6th. Um, Jelani Cobb will be the opening keynote and Nikki Giovanni will be the end keynote. Um, it was supposed to happen in person through the University of Texas or Texas State University. Um, but because of COVID, you know, regulations and for safety, a lot of the panels are going to be online. I'll be doing a disability justice and accessibility panel and also um, a part of an HBCU panel where we're uplifting our HBCU students. Since I spent 10 years teaching at Bowie State University and now I'm at the University of Minnesota. Um, but thank you for popping that in the chat. So yeah, so just know that, you know, black people like 
you know, like we're we're continuing to come, you know, for 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 y'all in terms of making sure that we are seen, that we're uplifted. We have thoughts. Um, we are in this art space. We are taking up space. We've always been taking up space. So yeah, so continue to, yeah. So state of black design, that's for folks that are speaking on advertising, graphic design, um, UX design. So I'm happy to be kind of, you know, representing the, the design educator, design, disability justice design space. So yeah, so this is beautiful, but, but we will definitely meet again, everyone. This won't be the last time. Um, Cause like, I feel like I feel sparked. I feel, you know, just, you know, Thank yeah. y'all so much. Yes. And we'll definitely continue this conversation about the workshop. Thank yes. you all. And thank you all for attending. Um, and I hope you have a good week. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.